Okay, here we are. Going to start venturing into a 5.6 and substitution. It is, for what it's worth, the chain rule of integral. So when I say use substitution, you'll know what it means. Okay. Um, sometimes you're going to run into integrals that are kind of ugly. Okay. Notice there's a product here. How do we take the derivative of a product? I don't know. But what you can notice is, is that the derivative of sine of x squared, okay, this is a chain rule problem. The derivative of the outside, sine, is cosine. Copy the inside. Then derivative of the inside. Look at that. See, those match. Okay, so if we were to take the integral of this, wouldn't you think we'd get that? Okay, the question is, how do we determine it? All right, it's called substitution. Now, the formal theorem is in your book. Um, I know that it really confused me when I was in high school, so I'm going to kind of give you the um, conceptual version, I guess I would say. On this problem, basically, because we cannot take the integral of cosine x squared, it's just right without substitution. So I'm going to do what's called substitution. I'm going to set u equal to x squared. Okay, so that's going to be u. So I'm going to end up with cosine integral, cosine, and then in here it's going to be a u instead of an x squared. Now, what do I do with this guy? Well, that's what's nice about this if you substitute properly. I'm going to take the derivative of that with respect to x. Okay. And then I'm going to actually move that dx by multiplication. And that's kind of not proper. But now we can see that we have 2x dx, 2x dx. And we're going to substitute that with du. Okay. And now I have a derivative that I can actually complete. Because you know the integral of cosine is sine of u plus c. We're not done yet, though. Now you take u back here and plug in. There's your integral. So you have to plug the u back in to make it final. That's called u substitution. I have substituted the u in for something complicated and made it more simple. Let's try another one. How about... I'm going to do these on the fly, so hopefully I'm good. So if I set u, I like to write mine out to the side here, because it kind of keeps things nice and even. I'm going to set u equal to this guy, because I think the derivative is going to give me something close to that. And then du equals 2x dx. So instead of doing du dx and then bringing the dx across, I just put it over there already. All right. But I need an x. What I need here is an x dx, not 2x. So I'm actually going to divide by 2. 
and I get one half du equals x dx. Now I can substitute. This goes in for x dx. So I'm the integral, one half, and du, and then the red, my u goes in here to the fifth. I think that's an integral we can take. It's just a, um, a power rule. So u to the sixth over 6 times 1 half is 1 12. Let's see. Plug u back in. Get 1 12th x squared plus 9 to the 6th. Let's see. Feel free right now to stop the video and go practice. You can come to class tomorrow and practice, and you can go watch the rest of the video later. And then you can you can work on some of the more basic substitutions. Okay. I'm going to move on and finish the section. If you want to keep watching, feel free. Um, we're going to look at sine, cosine, tan, the trig functions. We're going to look at E, um, you know, a lot of stuff. Okay. The integral of sine of 7 theta plus 5 d theta. Um, notice there's nothing out here. So it's just a number. But also notice this derivative here is just a number. So. I set u equal to 7 theta plus 5. du, I'm going to do it a different color. du is 7 d theta. There's no 7 over here, so I'm going to divide by that 7. We get 1 seventh du equals d theta. So my integral, I'll we'll have 1 7th and a du. And in here, I have sine u. You can take the derivative of that. And 1 7th, and that's negative cosine is the integral plus c. Substitute u back in, so you get negative 1 seventh cosine 7 theta plus 5. Let's see. And again, if you take the derivative of this, you're going to end up back at the integral. Okay. How about e? Well, you should have identify your u pretty easily here. The derivative of that is just a number, so we're just going to have a number out here. Let me scoot up for you. The derivative of this nine, negative 90 is a number. That's what we have out here is just a number. So, so u equal to negative 90. du equals negative 9 dt. There's no negative 9 out here, so I'm going to divide by negative 9. Yep. Negative 1 ninth du equals dt. That goes in for dt. And then we have this feller gives us e to the u. Now you can take the derivative or integral of e to the u. So we end up with negative 1 ninth e to the u plus c, which is negative 1 ninth e to the negative 9 t plus c.
All right, let me look here and see. Sometimes they get a little more complicated than those, of course. There's a couple examples in your book, six and seven. I'm going to show you the change of uh, the definite integral. The definite integral using substitution. And so if I have the integral, from 0 to 2, x squared root 3, uh, sorry, x cubed plus 1 dx. Notice the definite integral now, so we're not going to have any constants. I'm going to set u equal to x cubed plus 1. We'll get the square root of u. Take the derivative and we only have an x squared here, so I'm going to divide by 3. So 1 third du equals x squared dx. So I've just replaced u2 with 1 third du. Now, here's the difference. These numbers can, are in terms of x. I have to change them to be in terms of u. Or you can leave them, substitute later. Um, so if I have u is 0, if x is 0, we have 1 here. Okay. And if I put 2 in now, we get 9. All right, so I've just changed it completely to terms of u, and the map will just fall out. I end up with an integral that is 1 third u to the 3 halves. That's u to the 1 half, remember. Evaluated from 1 to 9. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, duh. I didn't divide by my power. Something was not right there. I just didn't see it. So if I add three halves, I have to divide by three halves. And that gives me uh, copy dot flip two ninths u to three halves. You plug that in. Nine squared is 81. The cube root of that is three. Sorry, the square root of 9 is 3, 3 cubed is 27, times 2 is 54 over 9, minus, and then 1 and 2 over 9, 52 over 9. Okay, so again, you can change the exponents also, or... You don't have to change the exponents. So if I have my derivative, I'm 
I can substitute back in and evaluate with my original numbers. So this goes back to the original numbers. Okay. But you remember you're in terms of x here. So this is all in terms of x. You change it to terms of u, all this is in terms of u. So it'll give you the same answer. Um, just be aware you can do both. Okay. Okay. Let me just show you one more and we'll be done. Zero to the power of four. Tangent cubed secant squared. Hope you see that we have a tangent and derivative is secant squared. Okay. Use tangent theta. Du equals secant squared theta d theta. So now I can put this in or these two. So that's going to be gone and become du. This tells me I have u cubed. The question is, do I change or do I stay the same? Personally, I like to change it. So the tan of 0 I think it's what? Zero. And the tan of pi over four is one. So tan pi over four, tan zero. So I have u to the fourth over four evaluated from zero to one, which is one fourth. Okay, that's um, about all I can show you. The rest of it we'll just have to work through in class. Okay. Here are your problems. Prelims, 1 through 3. Exercises, 1 through 11 odd. 17, 63, 66, 84. 587. AP2, free response 3. That's a toughie. Right, so you need to work on it for a bit, do. And then because it's a toughie, I'm going to knock those two down to just one each. So AP316 and AP4, number 10. Hope you have a fantastic night. Go Cardinals. Playoff games. Hope to see you there. Toodles.